Hello, my name is Carnella Jaskin and I'm the founder and CEO of Mind Catalyst. Mind Catalyst is a tech innovation and sustainability venture studio. Uh, we are here located in Atlanta, Georgia. And thank you so much for taking part in this presentation. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those during the Q&A. Thank you so much. So really happy for you to join me today. Um, you know, when you're talking about, and just to give you a little bit more information about my company, um, and to tell you a little, bit more, a little bit more about me, who am I and why do I uh, have the right to talk to you before you in regards to product development? Um, I'm the CEO and founder of Mind Catalyst. Uh, we create products uh, for clients. We actually help them to identify, pilot, and scale products that make sense for their customer base. Um, and so those products could be digital, they could be physical. We specialize in, in applying human-centered design, uh, design thinking principles to help clients to define uh, and develop uh, new ideas uh, that are around sustainability. Uh, and those products, again, could be digital and or physical. Our product, our technology stack is uh, mainly artificial intelligence, blockchain, and IoT solutions. And so my goal through this uh, experience is to share with you uh, my expertise in the area of bringing great ideas to life, uh, realizing those ideas, well-designed products uh, to market that are meaningful, relevant, and profitable. After years of mentoring and building my own firm, I have uh, developed a framework that could be applied to your next product idea. And I'm going to share that framework with you today. I've worked with startups, nonprofits, and multinational enterprises, such as uh, Texaco, uh, Health South, Eli Lilly, Rio Tinto, AT&T, uh, City of Atlanta. Uh, and so I've gotten, um, and I also work with a lot of uh, entrepreneurs through Georgia Tech as a, as a EIR, um, which is an entrepreneur in residence. And so I've gotten a really wonderful opportunity to help a lot of the up and coming uh, entrepreneurs and founders um, who are just starting out to uh, spread their wings and, and create products that really matter to our society today. So how many of us have struggled with um, ideas? Some have lots of ideas, other people have very few ideas, um, but it really takes an idea, right, to start a product, a product of meaning. Uh, do you have an idea? Where are you going to start with solving the problems. I mean, when I ask clients their initial, uh, during our initial meetings, you know, how does their product solve the problem or what problem? What problem does your product solve? Uh, many times I have people who have great answers or who have thought, you know, actually thought through that. And other times, um, you know, maybe not. And so the, the, what you want to do is make sure that uh, you're starting with the problem and not the solution. So, you know, this is something that a lot of uh, clients struggle with. So we have tons of ideas we want to build on, but we don't know how to move forward with those ideas into execution or launch. Or if you have an idea, or, and then how do you execute on that? So that's what we're going to talk about today. So there's two concepts um, that uh, my framework in particular has been um, well, it's not just two, but it's two that maybe most people know about uh, that my uh, framework has been inspired by, and that is design thinking and minimal viable product. Uh, just to give you a little bit more information, but my framework was actually inspired by a host of methodologies in this space. And so lean startup, uh, bomb testing, design thinking, minimal viable product, design sprints. So, you know, I've taken a, a the best of all of those worlds and put them together uh, to form my uh, framework. And I think that has served many of our clients very, very well. A great way, so with, with uh, design thinking, it's a great way to determine, um, you know, is your product even viable? So design thinking is a, is a way of bringing together empathy and experimentation into the product 
uh, and or the, the, the uh, software that you're building. And again, this design thinking process, methodology process, this framework that I've created, is not just for physical products or digital products, it's also for services as well. We've had very, very good success with it also being in the services space as well. So again, design thinking allows you to you know, anticipate what future customers may want from, a, from the very beginning of your product ideation uh, before you put down a single dollar towards production. So <clears throat> when you talk about minimal viable product, this is, the, this is where the bare necessities of what you can build or sell you know, to be successfully uh, and, and profitable. So what, you know, so, so we want to avoid as entrepreneurs is a, you know, unnecessary uh, you know, bloating around concepts. You know, we don't want to have too many features and functionality embedded into the very beginning of a product. Right? We want to make sure that we're really just bringing just the essence of the product to the market initially so that we can glean uh, feedback and input from our customers to, to help flush it out even further. Uh, and so this is known as the minimal viable product. So of course, I'm, I'm assuming that the million dollar question here is how to use these principles to create products for people. And, and customers that want them. Uh, there are a series of questions um, that we walk through in order to validate your idea that you have and to get it ready for the product launch. Um, we do this by starting at the beginning and focusing on the most important aspect of your business uh, with your user and your users. So what is the main, um, you know, what is the main benefit of the product idea that's offered to your customer base? Um, another question that we'd ask is, uh, you, know, you know, are you worried about, you know, marketing, I mean, you know, not necessarily worried about marketing, but um, you need to also um, isolate you know, what your product will be used for and why. Um, so I need to actually um, have you to kind of look at that and, dis and, and be discerning about, you know, why are customers actually going to be drawn to your, your product? So before you worry about marketing, turnover, operations, et cetera, you need to identify what your product does um, that other products that are similar uh, uh, does not do. So this would also help you to stay on track as well. So we isolate one feature by the first uh, by first targeting the problem. This is where the, the design thinking principles come into play. So you put yourself into the user's shoes. A big mistake I see often often with entrepreneurs is is to map out what they think the biggest use case would be for this particular product for users, and then find out later on by actual customers that this is not actually what customers really wanted. Uh, so, you know, it's really, that's why it's really important to create the minimal viable product of that, uh, of the version of that product, and then allow customers to help you to refine and also to de determine okay, what are the real needs for that customer. We may have a, a general idea of what those needs are, but we get really clear on that once the product is out with the customers. So we kind of see, is this what they are really wanting? Um, and we get them to answer those questions for us. The bottom line is once you know the problem for which you are solving for, uh, in terms of your users and customers, you have an invaluable tool of building product success. And so this leads to your MVP. So how will your product solve this problem for customers? Once you identify the problem, you need to look at how the concept solves this problem. The concept meaning your product. While focusing on it, you also want to see uh, if, the, if your problem, uh, if uh, you wanna also see if this is a problem your target uh, users even have to begin with. Going out and talking to uh, prospective customers and users 
would be beneficial in this state at this stage of, the, of, of uh, your product development. And because it helps you to understand not only what the needs are, but also what the customer actually wants. So for example, I just built a product. Um, I just built a product and uh, we, wanted, we want to make sure that um, for a particular client. Um, and so we're, what we're doing now is making sure that the, the product itself is very beneficial to those customers who will be using it. How will um, this help you when you're building your product? How do you think customers will actually pay for their your products? How much do you think they'll pay for your product? This type of information is information that you need to get from the customers during your testing process or feedback process. You want to also find out questions like how much time will uh, users need to spend using your application or your, or your product or your service? Uh, how much money do they need to spend on it? People aren't afraid to pay for things that, that solve problems for them. Look at you know companies like Apple, Nike, Tiffany, those companies around the world. People are actually pay premium price for products that they actually know, like, and trust. So when you're isolating these ideas around your product, you can pinpoint how valuable your product is to particular customers and appropriately put a price on the value of this, of this particular product. The more often they use, um, the higher that you can charge typically. Uh, Pinterest, pay nothing, but is, very, is used quite often. Uh, so hone in on how your product makes you unique and, and in comparison to other products that are out in the market space. Once you understand the necessity or the, the uh, or what's, what's, necess what's necessary for users in terms of functionality and features um, that makes your product stand out, then you'll have a strong MVP uh, for your product. So one thing that I have to say often to customers, um, and this is just that this product is not about you. Whatever product you're creating or service, it's really about your users. And so make sure that you are clear about that and understand that uh, your product is really about your customers um, and that understanding what the customer's needs are, how much they would pay, uh, what types of features or functionality they would engage in is really helpful in you determining um, you know, the viability of, of customers actually utilizing your particular product. It's also better to have at least three, maybe two, um, maybe I would say two to three features or maybe one to three features. Um, anything more than that would really kind of cloud the, the vision around your product. Uh, if you have over 30 features, I would say it, that's, that's, that's a bit much in terms of a product that you're going to be utilizing or putting out to the market space. You want to make sure that your product is simple uh, to use, simple to understand, so that people could actually, you know, be an early adapter of your product that you're putting out into the world. Again, you want to make sure that the problem um, that you're solving for your product is very clear and that they see your particular product as a solution to that problem, right? And so it's really key. That's why the problem of the product is very, uh, very important to identify very early on in your process uh, so that people can clearly see your particular product as the solution. And again, your product as a solution solves the problem. So when people actually see that, um, it's, it's easier for them to actually take note and be able to see your product as a solution that they should be paying for. And oftentimes you wanna ask yourself, why would someone buy my product? You know, you wanna make sure that you're asking yourself that, but you also wanna make sure you're asking your potential customers that information as well, because you want to obtain information from the client to say, hey, you know, I see that you're enjoying the, the testing of this product. You know, what makes this product unique to you? Why would you want to purchase this product? How much would you spend for this particular product? Uh, are there any uh, areas of which uh, there could be any product improvement? Uh, oftentimes, uh, people don't really, or they seem to forget that uh, 
you know, software that we actually use today, like Facebook and or Meta, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, when they first started, neither of them, none of them looked anything like or, or operated like they do today. And what helped them to shape and to evolve was the input from real customers, the feedback from customers, uh, actually good and bad. Um, you know, I call the, the quote unquote bad feedback or, or negative input is, uh, as, as vitamins because that really helps you to help shape how your product is going to work uh, in f- future releases of the product. And so I don't necessarily see those as a, as a negative. I see them as very positive to help us to move the product forward and to actually have it evolve in a more succinct way. So again, understanding the benefits of the product uh, for your MVP, for your customers, is essential uh, in efforts to make sure that we're we're not reinventing the wheel. We're making sure that we're sticking to tried and true functionality um, practices by using uh, these orders of or methodology in terms of this defining how our product is going to move about um, evolution. And again, your product wants, your MVPs are very concise and and they're beautifully designed. Um, I would say spend most of your efforts or your resources on making sure that you have a great development team. You have a great UX UI uh, team member uh, to help you to uh, you know, define and, and develop the, 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 the kind of aesthetics of the product, but also making sure that it's intuitive, that people have an easy way to navigate the product. Uh, nothing is worse than a product that you really don't understand how to operate it. Uh, when people are actually testing your product, it's not, you don't want to sit there and guide them on how to, to, to test your product. You want them to actually be able to intuitively move through the product in a way that makes sense for them. And again, products, uh, you know, making your product stand out and making it unique to what is already out in the market space is going to help you as a product owner, as a product developer and designer uh, to stand out in the marketplace and to be the viable solution for the problem that that your users are facing. Tons of other products that are out there in terms of, you know, particularly social media. And so we're looking at, you know, how do they differentiate themselves? And I think uh, many ways that we should differentiate yourself is to match ask your customers, talk to your customers about how, um, when they're engaging with your product, how is their engagement with the product something that will make sense for them in terms of, um, you know, what they're looking for in terms of the, it, your product and solution. Many times when, uh, when we're creating uh, various products for, cl- for clients, um, yes, we definitely add our, own, our, add our own information or features of functionality based on research um, that we've done about the client and, and also about the, the customer base that we're working with. But, but it's also about getting feedback and input from the various users and customers that the, current, that the clients currently have. Nothing wrong with... Uh, uh, you know, leveraging other types of, um, you know, technology or the products that are out there in terms of the, our, our competitors. Um, you know, people kind of work and, and are gravitating to products that make sense for them. I mean, some people are diehard Apple um, customers, you know, and have always been that Apple customer. And you have others, people who are more Google customers or Android customers. And so, and so, you know, we have the war of, of all, all three and, and, and maybe there's others of, 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 as well, but, you know, people kind of work and, and develop and also purchase um, products that make more sense to them. If it's an easier interface they, that they prefer over another, something like that, um, that's, that's, what, that's, that's really how the market works. So that's why it's really important to, to, to I would say, invest in the UX the user experience uh, and also the customer experience in, in general to make sure that your product has some intuitiveness to it and also a flow. It's attractive. Uh, it looks like something that people can actually use with ease. And make sure that you have some balance also in there in terms of the product. The product is not heavy with 
lots of text and you want it to be clean, um, not a lot of uh, words on your product, on your, on your screen. You want to make sure that your product actually makes sense. It's clear. Uh, it's, again, there's some balance of um, some interactivity, some intuitiveness, cleanness, uh, and it. it's, it's a sleek environment in terms of the, the way that the product looks and functions. And then we all know that it's 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 quality over quantity. So we want to make sure that it's you know we we put our best effort out in terms of the product being um, high quality um, without breaking the bank, of course. When you're uh, developing your MVP, uh, you want to make sure you're conservative with your resources, but that you are picking the most high quality resources that you can uh, while being conservative. And many people have this notion around fear of missing out. And so some people use that to their advantage in terms of marketing and their products and others um, don't use it at all because it, it may or may not be something that will be relevant for a lot of customers. And so you, in terms of, you know, a customer um, marketing efforts, you may want to just really focus on the, your target. Like here is the pain point that we're solving. And here is the problem that, if, you know, here are the, the, the customers that we're solving the problem for. I think we'll be uh, scheduled to do a Q&A later on this afternoon. I look forward to meeting you all there. Um, and please come with your questions. I'd love to answer any questions you have regarding the process of product development. So I'm going from idea to market fit. Uh, and everything in between from strategy to design to development to types of products that, that are out there, the types of products that you want to create around sustainability. Uh, looking forward to talking to you soon. And thank you so much for joining me. Take care.